Hello, and welcome back to another video of Calc Nerd. So, if you didn't notice, uh, right now I have a TI-83. This is actually my friend's calculator. And as you can see, uh, well, the screen is kind of glitched. Um, one way to maybe solve this, uh, and it does not work on this one, you click second in the down arrow, it changes the resolution. Uh, it just does not work on this calculator. Um, so what I'm going to do is take it apart and uh, most like the most likely culprit of this is the ribbon cable uh, between the screen and the main board of the calculator. And hopefully, uh, I can repair this calculator. Uh, one other diagnostic thing you can do is mode, uh, and then as you can see, it changed uh, alpha s. Uh, that's self test mode. Uh, it is very faint, but I can see a little bit of the mode screen. Uh, so I'm just going to do alpha s again. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the calculator is extremely glitched. Uh, it's like this all the time, and there it goes again. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try to do a repair on this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. When you're taking the calculator apart, there's two screws on the back. Take those two screws out, as well as the batteries and the small button battery. You will have to remove a screw for that. Uh, you have to apply a little bit of force when forcing apart uh, the calculator. Uh, and there's 10 screws that you will need to remove, uh, and you can use a number zero Phillips for this. Uh, those 10 screws, six of them are on the bottom plate, and then two of them are kind of hidden up next to the screen plate, uh, and then two more connecting the actual screen to where it sits. Okay, so now that I have the calculator apart, uh, the cable that normally fails is this ribbon cable right here. Uh, I believe these two are the power cables, and then these, uh, I think there's uh, 17 total, so there's two of these and 15 of these really small ones. Uh, and these 15 just transfer uh, other data and other logic to the main screen. So we have uh, some processing units here, a ton of uh, little resistors and capacitors, stuff like that. Then on the other side, we have the LCD screen. Uh, the screen should be just fine. Uh, the main culprit, again, of this is this ribbon cable right here. And uh, hopefully we can get this fixed. So yeah, stick around. And if you have the same sort of problem, uh, you can try to do the same fix as I did. Uh, when taking apart the calculator, uh, just note that there are some clips. Uh, for example, there's one like up here and down here. And so those clips are points where you just kind of have to force just a little bit uh, to get it apart. Uh, otherwise, it came apart pretty easily, and yeah, so hopefully we can get this fixed. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is get a smooth object. Uh, I'm using the tip of a caulk gun, uh, some sort of smooth object to just rub like I show in the video here. And what you're going to want to do is take something like a heat gun or a hair dryer or something like that. Works just fine, just something to get uh, the board and the glue a little warm so it will reapply. Make sure that you often reach your finger in to check the warmth because you do not want to melt the board because uh, that would ultimately re result in failure. So you're going to want to just rub that lightly and just do it back and forth until the board cools and settles in at about room temperature. When you are reassembling, just make sure to put all the screws in the right place. Uh, the short, stubby ones go on the main board, and then the couple longer ones uh, go up connecting the screen in. Uh, make sure that the two bottom ones go on top of the heat shield. Uh, as you can see, I accidentally put them in before, so you just have to screw them in on top of that heat shield. Clip everything back in place. Put the two screws in where the battery compartment is. I recommend putting in a fresh set of new batteries and then just close everything up and see if your calculator works. Okay, uh, here's the first time I'm going to attempt turning the calculator on. Uh, hopefully we have fixed it, so uh, let's find out. Click on. It's very faint. It does say memory cleared. Okay, that is a good sign. I clicked the clear button. It did not crash. I'm going to click second and up. You bring up the brightness and so far it has not crashed it's a good thing going to mode looks like everything is working so far awesome 
uh, 45 minus 1, 44. Okay, the calculator uh, is working so far, which is awesome. Um, so I'm going to click program. As you can see, there's nothing in it uh, because the calculator is cleared when you take that uh, coin uh, button battery out. Uh, that's how it keeps its memory. So if you do change the batteries, um, keep that coin button battery in there if you want to keep the memory of the calculator. That's always a good thing. Um, yeah, so far the calculator is working. That is really awesome. So all we had to do was just take that heat gun and rub uh, fairly gently, but with a little bit of pressure. Uh, I used a cap off of a caught gun is what I used, as I explained earlier. Um, so yeah, I just put just general pressure. Um, you can use pretty much any smooth surface. Um, it'll work pretty well. Just have some heat with it. Uh, it can be something as simple as a hair dryer or something. We actually had a heat gun, but a hair dryer uh, would work just fine. Uh, and as you can see, the calculator is working. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video and that you're able to fix your own broken TI-83.